in 1994, first game controller with Hall sensor joystick was introduced. 2001, Microsoft released the first Xbox console. 2021, the first Nintendo Switch game controller with Hall sensor joystick was released. And 2023, the first Xbox controller with Hall sensor joystick was released by GameSir. However, does this tournament legal controller actually deserve a spot? Unboxing experience is nice with the controller rock solid in packaging box. Inside you get a controller, 3 meter wide USB cable, some manual and sticker and 1 month Xbox Game Pass. I don't know why this cable has a big USB A port. The Game Pass only redeemable for new user. So if you already subscribe, this kind of pointless. Seriously Microsoft, this is so stupid. Body design is similar to all the G7. To be honest, there's only a few changes but only on features. Physical appearance is totally the same, plus I feel the controller shape is closer to ABDU Ultimate than Xbox controller. G7 SE has default white color. Since it uses the same frame shell, it is possible to swap the black version from old G7 to here. Surface texture is similar ABS plastic like any other peripheral. USB port is still deep like T4 Kali, but it has slightly wider hole so almost all of my cables can fit in. On the grip, there is diamond texture grip that extends until trigger area. It's not the grippiest but it does make you feel like you are holding something instead of hard plastic. The grip profile also slim closer to Xbox Series controller. Plus, if you see on the back, there is no screw hole. This is one of advantages having a faceplate design in a controller because screw can be placed at the front shell nearer to the PCB board. Thus, give the controller one solid block aesthetic and at the same time allow easy access for components. Joystick is a whole sensor joystick made by K-Silver. This is their main selling point for this controller. It also the same joystick in T4 Kali. Joystick feels a bit plasticky and hard for me. Since we can remove the faceplate, you can actually take out the cap easily and replace it with other kind of joystick cap. Gamesa cap has a slightly different size than first party. It's flatter and the shaft also thinner. It's not a really big deal because the shaft size can fit Xbox and DualSense joystick. Only for DualSense, you need to add a bit of padding in the hole because DualSense cap is deeper than Xbox. The same method also can be done on Xbox making it slightly taller than GameSir. You also need to recalibrate if you are replacing this with non-GameSir joystick, else you just get a wacky stick. Out of the box, circularity is perfect circle with 10% dead zone on default. Without that zone, it was not so bad. As usual, I set it to 5% but you can even go even lower than this. For the bumper and trigger, it has a similar dotted design like series controller. Trigger length is longer than series controller because we have a slimmer bumper. Trigger is hall sensor with trigger vibration or impulse trigger system. There is hair trigger function that can only be switched on inside the app. The default trigger dead zone is 5% but I suggest to go for 0% if you want to use hair trigger. The bumper is micro switch but lighter than series controller. It feels solid and not too clicky. A BSO button is standard membrane buttons. I'm not sure why they switch to membrane, either quality issue or keeping the cost down. Either way, this button is not all bad. In fact, if durability is something you're concerned about, membrane button will serve much better in the long run. When pressed, it's almost felt flush. But since it's membrane, it doesn't put too much pressure on your fingers. This design will not go well with micro switch but looking at how they did T4 Khalid, GameSir definitely can put a good micro switch buttons over here. In total, it's a good button and it works. D-pad is also membrane. This is different than their T4 Khalid. T4 Khalid is more concave while this is flat, same as their previous controller. There is onboard function for controlling volume if you connect to Xbox and you use headphone jack. Up down is for game volume while left right to balance voice chat. This bag reminds me on old Nintendo D-pad. In fact, it feels very similar to any Abidu D-pad. There are people out there who like this kind of D-pad but if you use Xbox D-pad a lot, this feels weird. The rest of the buttons is micro switch and act just like regular Xbox controller. And button at the bottom can be used to change the profile. Y is a default profile which cannot be customized except mapping the back button. B, A and S is for profile 1, 2 and 3 which can be customized to your liking in app. There is a long vibration when you switch profile but there is no indicator which profile you currently on. The back button is a micro switch and can be mapped to any buttons except M button. 
press M plus back button until the indicator flash, then press any buttons. To clear, press M plus back button, then just press back buttons again. The back button on my controller is not great. It has premature release before the click occurs. For holding action, this can lead to accidental release. It's okay with stepping, but if you like press user like me, this can get very annoying. It might be just on my controller, however, this is a common occurrence with micro switch. Despite easy to access, it's also a bit too loud. If you don't like the back button, you can lock it. It did not disable the signal, instead it locks the control position, so you can even press it. I feel it's kind of pointless because if you don't want back button, just clear the mapping. But well, if you like it, it's your taste. There's no macro recording on this controller. That's no trouble too. This controller is not input programmable. For this reason alone, this controller is totally legal. There's still few customizations can still be done. The software is Gamesa Nexus which can be downloaded from Windows Store. I don't have Xbox so I don't know if the same software can be accessed on Xbox or not. Inside, you can customize three onboard profiles. For mapping, it's self-explanatory. On stick page, you can adjust the dead zone and the maximum range. There is no sensitivity adjustment over here. You also can limit your output to whichever value you want, if that is your vibe. For trigger, they set the dead zone to 5% and max physical range to 95%. I put this to max because this whole sensor trigger is accurately max. You also want to assign some profile with hair trigger if you use it and make sure that zone set to zero. Else, you won't get your hair trigger instead just a delete button. For the haptic feedback, the option here is a bit dumb and mostly distracting. If you switch on anything here, it will override in-game setting. You can always choose one of these but not both. Level 3 trigger vibration is the default and it feels a bit too strong for me. Force trigger vibration means as long as you press the trigger, it will vibrate. Doesn't matter if there should be haptic feedback or not. Since trigger vibration means if there is haptic feedback, the trigger will vibrate too regardless if you press the trigger or not. So yeah, I suggest switch it off and let the game decide. Haptic feedback on grip is decent enough at level 3 which is the default value. Customization over here is not so much like t Click. No turbo, no micro and no gyro. For Xbox, this is fine because it doesn't introduce advantage over existing input but if you use this on PC, I feel this device is too basic. On the performance, this controller runs at twice the speed of a Xbox controller. It runs at a consistent 4 millisecond latency or 250Hz. Because the test can only be done on PC and I don't have an Xbox, I'm gonna assume this value on Xbox too. Else, at worst, you get 8 millisecond latency from console downclocking. You also can't overclock this controller. It was hard locked to 250Hz. Some say 1000Hz will come in the future. But one thing I learned from its manufacturer is don't trust them. They will shove their arm into your ass. So if you want very high premium rate for your Xbox, wait a few months after this video. Check back this channel. If not, check other channel. 500 and 1000 Hz is a big advantage in competitive gaming, especially if you are on Xbox because it will be a must have at that point. But we only can confirm this on Xbox if we have a similar HID USB program to accurately measure the latency in Xbox. Unfortunately, there's none of it. Unless any of you know, please let me know down in the comment below. You can always do high speed camera button press method but there is a small flaw on that especially when we start to compare between different buttons on different controllers. Regardless of all this bullshit, this is still faster than an Xbox Elite controller. It's not a big gun, small gun but still an advantage to a dog fight. Durability and repairability, this controller is very easy to disassemble because it uses faceplate design. You need standard T6 stock screw to open it. However, other than replacing the micro switch, I don't think you will ever need to repair anything on this controller. Membrane button and hole sensor already made this controller will last very long. As long you don't torture it. However, I still think it's a very good feature and it also allows Gamesel to sell more accessories like faceplate and joystick cap. That is if they know how to do business. Price wise, you can get this at 40 55 bucks. It's slightly more expensive than t There's only white color, but you can also buy it with black faceplate. There is another graphic faceplate, but I don't see they offer it on their page. However, if you are on budget just like a normal peasant like me, you're not gonna buy an extra faceplate. 
unless it's a waifu. So to conclude this video, Gamser G7 SE is the first Xbox controller with a hall sensor joystick, hair trigger, impulse trigger, at least twice faster than official Xbox controller, onboard profile system, faceplate design, friendly repairability, friendly joystick customization, and tournament legal. The downside will be only available in X input, lack of assistive features such as macro, turbo, and gyro, only wired version, and it's basic. That's all about it. I really like this. However, honest opinion, as an Xbox controller, you win by default. As a PC controller, it's a bit empty. I wish they release a wireless version as long as it's not crap wireless. By the way, I have coffee now. There is nothing over there yet, also I don't know what to put yet. But if you want to support me to do this kind of video or any hobby tech stuff on the internet, consider buy me a coffee. I'm seriously addicted. Okay, bye.